I want the police to be better armed than the bad guys, but today, what does that mean? More than 100 square blocks were decimated by fire and looters. After the Los Angeles race riots in the 60s, some cities created heavily armed assault teams named SWAT for special weapons and tactics. For years, SWAT teams were called out only in emergencies like a riot or bank robbery where hostages were taken. But their use has increased from less than one raid a day to today, maybe a hundred raids every day. Including cases where I have to wonder, why call out the SWAT team? Is there anybody that would be afraid of me if I was trying to menace you in some way? Joe Lapari is a stand-up comic. I got a fun story for you. The five foot three inch tall Lapari caught the attention of a SWAT team in New York City. Why? I had a really mind-numbingly bad customer service at the Apple store. So I did what we all do. I went home and I bitched about it on Facebook. <laughs> I thought I was funny. I quoted Fight Club. Joe paraphrased it, too. You might walk into an Apple store with an Armalite AR-10 carbine gas-powered semi-automatic weapon pumping round after round into one of those smug, fruity little concierges. People were immediately responding that it was obviously from Fight Club. I thought I was literary. You know, it was a good time. Until 90 minutes later, a SWAT team knocked on my door. <laughs> This is, yeah. You open the door and... The whole planet changed. Everyone's got their guns drawn. A dozen heavily armed men. Was that necessary? If they took 90 seconds to Google me, they would have seen I'm teaching a yoga class in an hour. I don't have a police record. I don't have a violent history. His local paper suggested Joe had been stupid. Who doesn't vent on the internet? I've never thought I could quote a movie, even a movie like Fight Club, and, and it would bring a SWAT team to my house. If I didn't answer the door with a sense of humor, who knows what could have transpired. New York City's police would not talk to us about their raid. But other SWAT teams like talking about what they do. I have participated in and planned approximately 2,000 high-risk tactical operations. Sergeant Charles Huth leads a SWAT team in Kansas City. We are not soldiers out here. We don't think we're soldiers. We aren't uh, fighting a war against an enemy. We're trying to help people. Police department, search warrant! Huth says his team usually knocks first, and then, depending on circumstances, waits 10 seconds or maybe two minutes. Police department, search warrant! before breaking down the door. We're not liable for any damage we do to people's property. We try to limit it. My guys will try to patch up as best we can the door. It's good, sir. The suspense of barging into homes makes good TV. There are several SWAT team reality shows. Officers have died in the line of duty serving this type of warrant. Before we did that show, kids would see us in a neighborhood and run from us. Uh, after we did that show, kids would run up to us and want to get in the van and check things out. While Sergeant Hughes doesn't like waking suspects up in the middle of the night, other SWAT team leaders do. Why then? We want to be able to win without having to fight. I like owning the stuff before we even get on. Steve Claggett's a 25-year veteran of the Dallas Police Department. If I have a gun at home and someone's banging on my door screaming, I'm more likely to pick up the gun well, than shoot. John, when you knock and announce, what you're announcing is police. Police for search warrant! Just because the guy says police doesn't mean he is police. That's a great point. Just hear bang, bang. It's scary. It's supposed to be scary. And we use that to gain a tactical advantage. Sheriff's on the search warrant! Catch them before they can think. That's exactly right. It doesn't get used too often today? I've been involved in over a thousand warrants uh, and, and operations. I can't think of any time where it hasn't been prudent to use SWAT. We've become so comfortable with this idea of using SWAT for everything as a first resort instead of the last. Washington Post reporter Radley Balco says the police are turning into warrior cops and that SWAT teams are greatly overused. Police search warrant! And in fact, today police use SWAT teams to raid truck stops that have video poker machines, barber shops, an organic farm, a frat house where there's said to be underage drinking. And Iowa police use this many armed men to raid a house where people are accused of credit card fraud. Using this kind of force and violence on people who are suspected of crimes that are not violent uh, is, a, is a wildly disproportionate use of force. Arizona police thought someone in this house might be part of a family drug ring. 
Inside, with his wife and child, was Jose Garina, an ex-Marine who'd completed two tours in Iraq and then worked in a local copper mine. He'd just gone to bed after his 12-hour shift. They take the door down to the battering ram. His son's in the house, his wife's in the house. He grabs his military weapon. They see this. Uh, one officer apparently tripped and fired his gun. The other officers mistook that for Jose firing at them. They open fire. 71 shots. They killed Jose. His gun was still on safety. Inside the house, officers found no drugs or illegal weapons. I cannot fault an officer for shooting at a person who raises a gun at them. SWAT team veteran Steve Imes now teaches SWAT tactics. Often he suggests, try a ruse instead of a raid. We would dress up in UPS and FedEx uniforms, take their truck, knock on the door, package at the door, come sign. One minute, please, search warrant. One minute, please, search warrant. When you burst into people's homes, nasty things do happen. This SWAT team believes there's a large supply of marijuana here. The police posted this video on the web, and it went viral. They rush in the house, shoot the dog, terrify the kid. The video speaks for itself. They're not pulling hair. They're not swearing. They're not knocking people on their faces. They're walking through the house, police with a search warrant, police with a search warrant. If a pit bull is attempting to bite a police officer, I think they have legal authority to stop the dog from biting them. I know they shot the pit bull because the pit bull was reportedly a threat. A federal magistrate found the officers did nothing wrong in that case. Nothing wrong, even though they didn't find that large supply of marijuana, just a tiny amount. When you're using SWAT teams to serve warrants on people suspected of drug crimes, you are creating violence and confrontation where there was none before. Police work is dangerous. They don't know what they're going to face at the other side of a door. They're just protecting themselves and making sure it's over quickly. If you're breaking into somebody's house in the middle of the night, their first instinct is going to be that another drug dealer is, you know, trying to rob them or rip them off. So police want protective equipment. SWAT teams often get that and more from the Pentagon. In the early days, it involved really odd stuff. Helicopters, airplanes, big ticket items that an agency probably could never afford, but in many circles couldn't use. Today, it's M-16s and uh, grenade launchers and tanks and armored personnel carriers. This is stuff that was designed for use on a battlefield. Some armored equipment is necessary, says Imes. His team once had to borrow a garbage truck to get close to a gunman to try to rescue people he'd wounded. We needed an armored car that day, and we didn't have one. Now, the Pentagon gives away mine-resistant armored vehicles called MRAPs. The MRAP's a terrible armored car. But they use it. Because it's free. In your town, the sheriff's office got an MRAP. They need that? Any armor that you can procure, uh, especially free, is a good thing. I'm a huge fan of having it and not needing it versus needing it and not having it. Local police also get cash grants from the Department of Homeland Security, which they use to buy armored trucks like this Bearcat. The Bearcat's the preferred vehicle, beyond question. They don't you give have it to away. pay for that. 270 grand, and the MRAPs just come and drive it off the lot. All of this equipment has a purpose. Police fire, search warrant! Police search warrant! The All purpose right. is to protect the officers and make it clear to the bad guy that he faces overwhelming force, that fighting back would be futile. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! Get on the ground! Show me your hand! We just served a uh, no-knock search warrant in houses like this where we know people are armed, we know their criminal history, robbery, rape, etc. Uh, we're not going to knock on the door. When we hit the door, one of the main subjects uh, stood up with a Glock handgun. So they tossed a flashbang grenade to distract him. When it went off, he fell to the floor dropping the gun. Before he could reach over to the gun, my guys were on top of him. We are not going after uh, little Johnny selling a quarter sack of weed out of his grandma's house. But sometimes SWAT teams raid homes of people who didn't even do that. They raided the home of Bob and Addie Hart, former CIA employees. Why? When my son was in sixth grade, he and I built a hydroponic garden in our basement. A police officer spotted Bob and his kids coming out of the gardening store, wrote down his license plate number, and told the sheriff's department they left with a small bag of merchandise. Eight months later, 
The county sheriff sent a raid team to our house for a full-blown drug raid. We hear banging and screaming on the door a little before 7.30 in the morning. I'm hiding under the covers. Reach out, open the door. Immediately, I'm on the ground, face down, hands behind my head. I'm staring at this guy's boots. He's standing over me with an assault rifle, and everybody's yelling, are there children in the house? The police knew nothing about Bob and Addie's work history. We've held top secret security clearances that we've had background checks for for my job. They kept us under armed guard for two and a half hours while they searched, as near as we can tell, every square inch of our house. We didn't find out why this team had come to our house until more than a year later. They must have told you. Well, no. All they were told was there are narcotics in this home and we are going to find them. But they didn't. The officers even gave the hearts a receipt. No items taken. So why the SWAT team? One of the guys told us that marijuana seeds and stems had been pulled out of our trash. Neither Bob nor I have ever used pot. So then our minds really go crazy. The trash people are involved. The neighbor kid must be, you know, walking through right. and throwing their stuff in our trash. But it turned out that what the police found in their trash was not marijuana. It was tea. I drink high quality loose tea. I brew it in big batches. And then when I'm done with it, I throw it into the trash. Police found the tea leaves and did a field test on them. They had a positive reading for marijuana, and that was enough to then raid our home. It wasn't until after the raid that police sent the tea leaves to a lab. The lab came back and said, doesn't look like pot. You know, it doesn't test positive for pot. Leaves yes. and stems, you're yes. guilty of. I don't know that we're guilty of anything, but drinking tea. <laughs> of course, sometimes SWAT raids are needed, but a hundred raids every day?